Hi guys, welcome to another episode of our podcast, Talent First. Today we have a leader who is working in one of the most exciting companies in India, Aether Energy. They are building something which is truly for India, in India, uh, in, a, in a space which is very exciting, that is the EV space. He is the head of BI and Analytics there. Hi Ankit, hi, how are you? Hello, hi. What's going on? All good, so far so good. Enjoying the journey. <laughs> Enjoying the journey. So I think you have to research a little bit. You know that we started the elevator pitch. Yes. So what is your elevator pitch? I did get pitch? a chance to kind of hear to some of my predecessors. And some very exciting speakers, Jee. I must say. So congratulations on getting that kind of a lineup. Thank you. So elevator pitch for myself. Okay, let's keep it as an elevator. Let's do a little Hindi, please. Okay, let's do a little bit of Hindi. <laughs> So let's assume that this is a 10 or 12 building, so then elevator pitch has to be more like elevator pitch. Yes. Few things that define me are technology, snooker, single malts, people, photography. These are the things that inspire and define. Hmm. Perfect. I think this is, this is actually an elevator pitch. <laughs> That's what I think I finished before the uh, elevator would have got on that. <laughs> so, so okay, let's try to understand. Your journey is a little bit. Where did you start your journey? Aap, अपनी थोड़ा schooling के बारे में बताइए और upbringing little bit about that. So schooling uh, for me was very straightforward. Happened in Jaipur all throughout. Unlike many other kids who have uh, various reasons to change cities, change schools, I didn't experience that thankfully. So I had a very very strong set of friends over the entire tenure of schooling. My schooling was with Saint Xavier's Jaipur, hmm. and Jaipur kid is what I am. So hmm. Jaipur is where I've grown up. Pretty much all my schooling, education, even at the graduation happened in Jaipur. Hmm, hmm. So that was the education part. And then uh, right after that, I went to MICA, which is in Ahmedabad, Mudra Institute of Communication. Hmm, hmm. A kira tha advertising ka from uh, very early days uh, in my kind of career. So wanted to see if I would be able to kind of do something tell, in advertising. Tell me one thing, when you were in Jaipur, uh, what I understand now, though Jaipur is still really developed. At that time, I'm assuming it was still on the face of it. Yeah. And Delhi is a very interesting place for people who live in Jaipur. They look up to Delhi. They go to Delhi to shop. जो मैंने देखा है, जो मैंने सुना है. I I don't know आपके ये इसमें क्या था. तो जो marketing branding का आपके दिमाग में thought थी. Did it stem for some visits you made to some bigger metropolitan cities? No, no, no. I would say other way around. Achha. Jaipur is always an interesting place for people who stay in Delhi, NCR. <laughs> wow, true, true Jaipurite. If you look at any Delhi family, the wedding shoppings will, shoppings will happen in Jaipur. No, no. I... You look at their weekend getaways, that will be in Jaipur. Right, right. Or nearby in the vicinity, hmm, uh, hmm. Pushkar, Jaipur, Udaipur. Udaipur, right, right. So it was probably always other way around where hmm. people from there were visiting here. But Kira was not because of that. I think I had an elder cousin. When I was in class 8, he was staying with us my elder cousin and he was pursuing his MBA. So he used to uh, read a lot of those marketing books. That's where probably my first exposure to like, okay, what MBA is, hota kya hai, and uh, what do they really study? Hmm. So that's where I first got introduced to a advertising book. So when you were 12th, mein the, uh, this is 93? No, 12th was 98. No, 90, 98. I'm assuming that after the liberalization, जो इंडिया के अंदर एक कंज्यूमरिज्म स्टार्ट हुई थी hmm. बहुत सारे एडवर्टाइजिंग चीजें शुरू हो गई थी टीवी हैड स्टार्टेड न्यूज़ हैड स्टार्टेड स्टार हैड कम अप एनडीटीवी हैड कम अप प्लस द केबल टीवी केबल टीवी हैड कम अप जी केबल टीवी बिकॉज़ 90s आई रिमेंबर व्हेन बाबरी मस्जिद डेमोलिशन हैपन दैट 6 दिसंबर वाज द डे वेयर द फैमिली रियली फेल्ट दे वर सुपर अगेंस्ट केबल टीवी बट दैट वाज द डे दे फेल्ट कि चाहिए आज तो लगवा ही लेते हैं। There's a live coverage happening on BBC. Right, BBC right. was the only channel covering. National hmm, media hmm, was not hmm. covering it. So that is when hmm. uh, I think there was a lot of exposure to those uh, that kind of media. Also. So उस टाइम पे when you were a child, tell us some of the ads that that you saw that you still remember. Uh, because I'm sure कुछ रहे होंगे. Clearly, top of the mind are those classics which today people read in case studies. Be it your little, hmm. which is the little girl or your Amul or your Nirmas or your uh, even Oneda, mm, TV. The Devil's 
thing the devil one so they had like right, yes. right, right. Yeah, yeah so i think those were few of the classic ones then of course uh, growing up later in 90s was more around bajaj hmm apna chet apna bajaj something like yes uh, and then your cadbury ad hmm. Hmm. so i think these were very very classics like hmm. uh, any kid who has grown up in 80s and 90s would remember hmm. Hmm. then you went into college yes that is to do with marketing so my post my graduation college was in uh, like graduation was in commerce hmm. so i did a commerce e-com. bcom and that was in rajasthan university padhai kam dhande mein jana tha aapko bcom kar rahe the matlab dhande mein jana tha padhai kam hoti thi mba karna tha i was very clear from my class at college ki mba karna hai so bcom seemed like a more appropriate right. route rather than toiling hard ca karta hmm. bahut mehnat hmm. lagti hmm. engineering was definitely not my cup of tea so decided for bcom and then uh, post bcom was this where mica happened so i did a program in advertising there uh, in copywriting specialization hmm. was in copywriting hmm. so had a portfolio of my own for about 3 4 years after that course i tried doing freelancing also us time bhi hoti freelancing ha there were some clients in jaipur including lg we did one project for lg as well hmm. so lg local office wanted to do something on the festive hmm. so those kind of uh, kind of so called local activations marketing used to happen hmm. Hmm. that's where i could try my hand uh, hmm. so you are in mica नाउ बिफोर वी टॉक अबाउट माइका पर से वॉट माई अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज कि आप एक बिजनेस फैमिली से आते हो योर डैड वॉज अ बिजनेस मैन यस ही वॉज एंड इफ एम नॉट रॉन्ग योर ग्रैंड फादर वॉज अ आई एस ऑफिसर राइट ही वॉज सो मेरी जो पर्सनल अंडरस्टैंडिंग है कि फैमिली में एक्सपोजर बहुत था बिकॉज ग्रैंड फादर इज इन टू ब्यूरोसी ही इज एक्सपोज टू लॉट काइंड ऑफ पीपल घर पर बातें होती हैं फादर इज एक्चुअली इन टू ऑपरेशनलाइजिंग बिजनेस एटीज के अंदर आई एम श्योर वो अपने उस पे होंगे जर्नी में ट्रू तो आपका मतलब एज एज अ यंग बॉय आपके पास लाइफ में एस्पिरेशन क्या थी मतलब करना क्या था मुझे एक तरह से मुझे लगा सब कुछ ये अचीव हो गया था घर में एक तरह जस्ट थिंकिंग अबाउट इट आई थिंक करना आई रेड अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कोट व्हिच वन ऑफ माय लीडर इन एचपी फ्यू इयर्स बैक सेड इन अ फोरम देयर आर टू टाइम्स व्हेन पीपल आर काइंड ऑफ बोर्न वन इज द डे व्हेन दे आर बोर्न one is the day when they realize what they have to do hmm. in life or oh, why why, why were they born hmm. Hmm. so i think that quote has stayed with me to wo to abhi bhi matlab i think it's a very bigger question to say so as to what did you want to achieve in life but ha ye bada clear tha from a very childhood that uh, wanted to pursue mba hmm. and mba was i think a mix of influence from how the family was into business and how i saw my kind of elder cousins my own brother growing up uh, and picking up similar hmm. faculties of education so that was very clear ki mba to karna hai hmm hmm so kahan se karna hai kya karna hai will it be marketing will it be sales i think all of that many of those things happen over a period of time you can't really plan for all of hmm. those to so, mba ke baad kya hua fir so after mica then four years of this and then i was with my father uh, helping him in his business after mba not after mba it was in fact uh, interestingly four days after my class 12 acha okay so i still remember 12th april my exams got over board ke cbse and then one of my friend and uh, cbse hmm. so april mein cbse hote hain baaki hmm. ib is very different and we didn't have ib schools that time hmm. or honge bhi to pata nahi hoga hmm. so zavius was a very great benchmark yeah. for us it was a great school so we studied there but four days after the class 12 exams uh, a couple of my friends started joining uh, paging companies and it was that time i'm not sure if you ever used a pager but back in back in that late 90s alpha pager alpha numeric pager numeric pagers these were three kind of category of pagers so one of a friend uh, joined uh, modi pager hmm. in jaipur itself so that was like yaar isne to kaam shuru kar diya so hum kya kar rahe hain hum kya kar rahe hain what are we really doing bcom in a jaipur place like jaipur is not really like where every day you are hmm. headed to college so that's where uh, business seemed a very obvious choice started helping my dad in his business started sometime in 98 and then uh, over the course of next 7 years i took couple of uh, attempts at uh, mba exams also then in 2004 is where i kind of cracked my mba entrance hmm. and went to sibm so that's when mba happened and hmm. post mba was more of a corporate journey then tell us post like the last couple of months hmm. when your mba is about to end and you are doing campus placements i'm assuming ha huh. kabhi baat nahi uthi ki yaar dobara dad ka business join kar leta hu uthi to hogi 
uthi thi infact one of my last years uh, which i which we were talking about earlier so 2004 when i was kind of decided that okay enough of those mba efforts and attempts one of the evenings when i was just coming back after a work uh, it was more like a routine every day in the evening after you've done your sales round and sales uh, pitch or a travel Papa then you come back uh-huh. so back in office so office mein my dad was talking to me and he was like are you sure you want to be in business i was like Achha. itne saal ke baad dad asking, ne bola ah, wow itne saal ke baad you are asking me that am i sure to be in business i said this is what it is now hmm. so you were like uh, be sure because he was the only person in business from his family so he was like i don't want you to ever feel that you got stuck because of something else that you wanted to wow. do which you couldn't pursue so that was the trigger for the that was a very selfish thing attempt. to say right uh-huh. if you as a father if you think about it he will need one more hand i think totally grateful my Malab. my professional journey could have been very very different if it was not for very selfless moment. thing to say if you think about it so i am not really sure what was going through his mind at hmm. that point in time kya lagta hai aapko ab aap introspect karte ho if you were maybe he always felt that uh, his ability to give time to his family hmm. for family holidays etc a lot of those things actually in, uh, practically were governed by him him being the only person managing the business hmm. so i think that is that could have been a trigger is my guess hmm. Hmm. so that's what triggered ki chalo ek aur attempt लेते हैं एमबीए पे एंड 2004 इज व्हेन आई डिड एंड देन गो थ्रू माय एमबीए देन गुड ईयर हैपेंस देन इन द इंटरेस्टिंगली देयर वर मेनी कंपनीज दैट केम ऑन कैंपस एंड आई स्टिल हैड दैट एडवर्टाइजिंग कीड़ा सो आई डिड माय समर इंटर्नशिप विद जेडब्ल्यूटी जे वॉल्टर थॉमसन ओके इन गुड़गांव एंड वर्कड ऑन पेप्सी एज अ अकाउंट सो देयर वर सम वेरी वेरी आइकॉनिक मिरिंडा कैंपेंस दैट केम वेयर Asin you remember Asin one of the bollywood actors Micro Max guy she is yes. married to him right yeah, yeah yeah the same uh, actress who was in Gajni so Asin was just coming up this is 2006 7 so Mirinda in a Pepsi account they were doing some research and this is where we did some more like a consumer profiling and research as two interns hmm. and we came up with some of the innovative uses of mouth hmm. and then came the Asin campaign hmm. uh, campaign few months later so is when we realized that okay our work was utilized mm, for this mm. so did mm. advertising internship right but by the time i was finishing my second year of mba i realized ki yaar advertising mein grow karne mein it will be a lot of hard work and aap toiling hard work dekh rahe the ya aap paisa dekh rahe the because paisa dekh rahe the paisa dekh rahe the because hard work dono jagah hai because jo meri understanding hai jitni ye creative field hai jitna aap acha kaam karte ho utne paise nahi milte isme you do get money but, but i think it's at the later stages of life later stages like tech wagaira mein business wagaira mein sales mein jaldi banane lag jate ho aap aise yes that's true and the other thing was which was secondary to be very honest of course first was <laughs> you get some faster money in life right right but the second thing was uh, that there were two approaches to get into marketing one was you get into advertising and then move on a client side move into hmm. a pure play marketing the other was you get into sales and then move into marketing in any organization I felt sales would have given me that edge in terms of learning. I always felt that uh, for whatever reason but I felt that people who would have only moved from a marketing to marketing wouldn't have done sales before. They always for many first years of their life would lack that on ground reality. Mm-hmm. So I thought probably sales is a better route to get into. I think sales ke andar what I believe is ki aadmi ko uski matlab ekdam baj jati hai. Like if sales hoti hai rejection is something which you see very often rejection gets you grounded totally. really gets you grounded totally so i experienced that in my family business <laughs> where my uh, i remember we had a industrial heating element business and uh, it was absolute cold call kind of business cold calling hmm. you park your bike in one of the industrial wow. areas and then get down the physical field sales physical field sales so not linkedin pe message bhej diya digital was i'm talking of 90 to 2000 i'm just trying a comparison yeah so park your hero poke or your bike whatever was there at that point mm. in time in one of the industrial areas central point then back to back back to back back to back whatever factories are there whichever one has uh, industrial heating application you go there and kind of uh, just one second hmm sorry no worries hmm. so you go to those factories and uh, try and pitch for the products that you have hmm so hmm. that was a very very cold calling so wahi pe wo jo ek aspiration thi brand consultant and hmm. brand management and advertising i think a lot of that got grounded there hmm. grounded in a positive manner 
that it was more level grounded like grounded uh, level to the ground that okay sales has a lot of learning to offer to you in mm. your early career and I, and i think i still swear by that anybody wanting to make a career should do couple of years of sales kitne saal kiye aapne sales i did almost 11 years of sales from when like how four years to a dad four years with my family business and uh, from almost 2007 to 2013 and another seven years of six seven years of sales seven years hmm. post mba hmm. with goodyear and airtel both so if you look at your sales career just your sales career what was something if you could go back in time hmm. do differently as a salesman nothing at all nothing at all nothing at all i think i had such an awesome learning right. i really struggled and i failed there were bosses uh, who were very very toxic कैसे? और मे बी देवर नॉट सो टॉक्सिक कैसे कैसे हाउ वॉट यू डिफाइन एज टॉक्सिक यार टॉक्सिक कैसे रात को 11 बजे फोन करके यू जस्ट कम बैक फ्रॉम ऑफिस इन अ प्लेस लाइक जमशेदपुर विच इज लाइक टाटा वाला जो है टाटा वाला सो इट्स अ प्लेस वेर यू हैव नो फैमिली नो फ्रेंड्स नन ऑफ योर बी स्कूल फ्रेंड्स आर प्लेस देर इन जमशेदपुर एंड योर फर्स्ट पोस्टिंग इज देर इन जमशेदपुर यू आर ट्रेवलिंग झारखंड बिहार उड़ीसा सच अ ब्यूटिफुल प्लेस टू ट्रेवल टू बट इन दैट कैंड ऑफ अ प्लेस इलेवन इन दी नाइट एंड यू जस्ट हैड सम डिनर होटल कुकड मील एज अ डिनर and we would hotel and every day yoga and every day uh so the same there are three or four things that you will have as a vegetarian so that's what i had aur 11 baje phone aa raha hai ki your yaar pure all india ka sales plan tumhari wajah se atka hua hai and your manager is kind of half drunk half drunk hmm. you don't really feel too comfortable that's the toxic setting <laughs> that i'm talking about hmm. so but, some but i think that also was hmm. a immense learning hmm. you start valuing good bosses good leaders only when you meet or come across people like these mm. so i think i was very fortunate for most part of my career that i had some tremendous managers tremendous leaders to look up to mm. so, but maine ek cheez suni hai logo se ki wo log kehte hain if we start a career in sales mm. sometimes that detailing part we stop doing because kya hota hai matlab jo maine logo se suni hai baat because sales mein aap jab karte ho you are at a point being after upon being top level just closing deals you are talking to them and you're talking more than act, like i'm just trying uh, to uh, uh, tell you what i've heard now in your career a major part initial part to was predominantly sales hmm. kabhi jab aapne sales se hatke practitioner type ki cheezon mein aap aaye hmm. technical cheezon mein aap aaye hmm. to aapko shuru mein feel hua yaar ki bahut mehnat hai matlab bahut boring ho raha hai patience meri wo ho rahi hai i think uh, if i were to draw analogy it's same as me going to delhi as a jaipur boy versus delhi coming to jaipur so hmm. i tend to disagree there hmm. sales may the kind of detailing that you get into if you really want to exceed or succeed in uh, ex- kind of excel in sales the kind of detailing that you get into starting from every morning when you start picking up and especially channel sales deals wagera na bada b2b mein hota hai where you talk of 10 million dollar deal and ye close kiya wo close kiya hmm. channel sales mein ye sab nahi hota hmm, hai hmm, hmm. channel sales mein you go to a distributor and imagine a tire distributor hmm. uh, who has done that business for as many years as you are old hmm. so you don't really go and teach them business obviously right so what do you really talk to them hmm. is what you really learn as a skill hmm. usko ja ke jo distributor 20 saal se maal bech raha hai usko aap ye to nahi sikhate ho ki sales kaise hoti hai hmm. and if you start talking profitability to them of course you do have to keep that in mind that they continue to stay profitable but aap usko dhanda nahi sikhate ho hmm. to kya aap seekh rahe hote ho kya karte ho fir aap usko how do you sell to him or uh-huh. yeah you need to learn a lot of things these are those finer skills which i think make up for what you are today or what i am today that uh, if i can go and talk to my distributor and dealers and it is actually if you look at it or rather in retrospect i think sales really teaches you the first few lessons of your being empathetic leader If you're empathetic enough, you'll understand कि वो डीलर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर कितने पेन में है क्या सोच रहा है वो आपका कितना माल लेके बैठा है देर इज अ मनी ब्लॉक एंड वाइल एज अ सेल्स गाय एज अ कंपनी पर्सन यू आर थिंकिंग मंथ एंड मुझे मेरा टारगेट करना है बट दैट्स नॉट हिस्स स्टोरी हिस्स साइड ऑफ ऑल्सो इज अ स्टोरी वेर ही नीड्स टू मेक मनी ऑन वॉट यू डम्प डिम लास्ट मंथ सो दैट डम्पिंग डजेंट वर्क फॉर टू लॉन्ग सो आई थिंक सेल्स में वॉट यू सिंग इज एम्पथी इवन दो यू मस्ट बी ट्वेंटी सिक्स एट दैट टाइम ट्वेंटी सेवन ट्वेंटी सेवन दीपल वी Oh, one of my first uh, TSM who was reporting into me was forty-two, forty-three. जितनी मेरी उम्र नहीं थी उतने साल उसने एक territory में और उसमें से आधे साल एक company में निकाले थे. Guy was brilliant, but then you need to learn to deal with those egos, 
those strong presence which can be threatening sometimes to you as a manager of a guy who's so you teach this to me for me what happens is that i am running a company hmm. i have people who are some of them are pretty old, like elder to me i have as much experience as my age now what do you think if i have to work with them get work done hmm. uh, how should i go about it or me or anyone i'm just like making it open ended question elevate up it just answer one word hmm. which is humility hmm. i think uh, that humility allows you to learn from them work with them and there are teething issues always when you come across such people i had teething issues Gee. my team really kind of my first 9 months and i still remember when i after 9 months of the first manager when i was hmm. asked to join second manager hmm. saying ki acha chalo second hmm. chance mil raha hai company mein there was a territory change hmm. from eastern india i came to more like central hmm. Hmm. so i remember telling my manager that my first 9 months were like you know really the how the delivery happens hmm. Hmm. i was drawing a an analogy to that and saying yeah it's more like a birth for me or a rebirth for me par pehle 9 mahine bahut pain mein gaye the that pain was like a real pain hmm. like uh, whether that was because of uh, the kind of people you work with or the kind of senior uh, senior egos that yep, you manage yep, yep. but i think humility teaches you well said after first few months of teething issues where the person of course you go with a trust deficit so how do you first bring that trust deficit to at least some sort of normalcy hmm, i'm hmm. not saying you need to be friends with them but at least bring that relationship to a professionally cordial relationship hmm. and then uh, post that as if you are able to get some tokens of trust in your account in your favor that's where you start excelling Hmm. बट सीखना तो उनसे ही पड़ेगा hmm. सीखना आपको उस डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर से डीलर से जो आपसे आपकी उम्र के बराबर उतने साल वहां उस टेरिटरी में काम कर रहा है इन टू दैट बिजनेस एंड ही वर्किंग विद टेन सच कंपनीज एंड द गाय वर्क फॉर ट्वेंटी प्लस ईयर्स वाइल यू आर जस्ट ट्वेंटी समथिंग इन योर एज सो आई थिंक दैट यूमिटी अलाउज यू टू नी सो नाउ सेल्स से मार्केटिंग में आपका जो ट्रांजेक्शन हुआ ये आपका ट्रांजेक्शन HP में हुआ या Airtel में ही होना शुरू हो गया था आई थिंक सेल्स टू मार्केटिंग स्टार्टेड हैपनिंग इन गुडियर इटसेल्फ गुडियर में होने लग गया कैसे बिकॉज़ आफ्टर माय फर्स्ट फ्यू इयर्स ऑफ दिस झारखंड बिहार ओडिशा देन एमपी छत्तीसगढ़ देन गोवा राजस्थान एमपी गुडियर इज अ इंडियन कंपनी ना नो इट्स अ एक्रन ओहायो बेस्ड कंपनी यूएस कंपनी अच्छा अपोलो इज अ इंडियन कंपनी अपोलो अपोलो एमआरएफ हु डू डू यू कंपीट विद एमआरएफ अपोलो यही कंपनी होती यस ब्रिडस्टोन दीस आर द कंपनीज और योकोहामा Michelin, so, Michelin. Mm-hmm. Yes, these are the companies. Mm-hmm. So, yes, Goodyear itself. Uh, I transitioned in my last year into a national role where I was doing sales operations and trade marketing. So, sort of a marketing started or deviation from sales to a, the trade most adjacent. Trade marketing? What is it? Where you are doing channel marketing. So, you are designing schemes for channel partners. So, you are yeah. taking incentives for them and all of that. All your relationship scheme, how your target across the portfolio, your product mix. How do you want to plan the incentives so that company meets set targets and while of course the dealer also. And you also give them, you know, trips and all of those benefits and all. I've I've heard. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are all sorts of yeah, incentive right. schemes and trips that happen there. Mm-hmm. So as a head of national sales operations and trade marketing, that's where the first. So, आप तो बहुत जाते होंगे इन trips वगैरह में. With ah. Goodyear, I traveled a lot. Hmm? Traveled a lot. कोई अच्छी अच्छी जगह है बताओ जहाँ आप गए trips. I think Turkey was very good. Wow. Then US was very awesome. You took your dealers there. Yes, yes. ठीक है यार हमें भी dealer में खोल लेनी चाहिए Goodyear. It's a it's a great business. खोलना हो तो बताओ. So right, right. Turkey. But there, there were many trips. Hmm, uh, hmm. But besides the trips, I think what also happens in those trips is you really form that relationship. genuine relationship yeah, yeah. with the channel partners. I think that's the reason why you go for those trips. Exactly, and a lot of your company senior leadership also hmm. would really join CEOs for the same reason. Yeah, because on a everyday basis, though they don't get to meet your channel partners. The other thing happens, which is a very finer nuance of these trips, is you start to mingle or meet or interact with dealers or channel partners who are not even in your territory. So, which means tomorrow, if you have a transfer from MP to Maharashtra, hmm. you already have a certain level of ice breaking that has happened with those channel partners. Good see these trips. Hmm. So your growth within the company hmm. gets little smoother hmm. Hmm. because you are able to perform in newer markets hmm. Hmm. then atel me how did that happen and what was your role there interestingly enough uh, there was this hmm. constant thought which was cropping up in my mind because Gee. my last role was as i told you uh, was a national role in goodyear so board room meetings there was some access to board room meetings in once goodyear. in a while yes so not the board meetings but the so called yeah, board room yeah. meetings so i had those access and when i went there 
I realized I don't want to be one of those guys who after 16 years will stand up and talk about the industry which is just one, which is tire industry and mm -hmm. somebody else will say, Dekha hai kya hai. Tumne ek industry, ek company, ye dekha hai. So I felt maybe I should experiment with something else. Mm -hmm. And that's when, uh, fortunately for me, uh, telecom happened. Hmm. Airtel uh, was a super strong name to be kind of associated Bharti with. Airtel. Yes. And I ended up joining them for DTH uh, in Gujarat. In Gujarat? Uh, and in five months after that, DTH ke mein I got prepaid as well. And prepaid is a very strong hmm. portfolio for... In logo, I remember the DTH ka concept was that you had unlimited recording. Hoti thi. Inka kuch, I remember, I'm not, I have a faint memory, that when they DTH launched, there was a Dish TV tha competition. Mein. Huh. And Inka came out, red rung ka dabba hota tha, red or black. Huh. And there was a concept that you had to see a few recordings in a week. जो आपके शोज आए ऐसी कुछ था ऐसी कुछ था ना ट्रू ट्रू सो कुछ ये यूनिक था कुछ इट वाज अ वेरी इनिशियल फेज ऑफ डीटीएच एक्चुअली बिकॉज़ केबल ऑपरेटर्स हैड अ वेरी स्ट्रांग लॉबिंग इट वाज अ फुल ऑन लॉबी बिजनेस माफिया था केबल ऑपरेटर का एंड देन केम कंडीशनल एक्सेस सिस्टम कैस ओके सो कैस वाज अ गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसी व्हिच टर्नड और रादर काइंड ऑफ कर्टेल्ड द एंटायर केबल टीवी बिजनेस and moved it into a more regimented where pay-per-view sort of a business came up. Hmm. So then uh, all of these companies start... In fact, there was pay-per-view at that time. India was pay-per-view, I don't think so India was pay-per-view. Now it's pay-per-view in the sense that you have all these OTTs, plus you choose your channels. Hmm. 2012, you were not choosing your channels, you were given some packages. Hmm. So you could choose your package. HD के बारह चैनल चाहिए, SD, whatever, uh, those were the... Hmm. Hmm. I think at that time, Tata Sky with Hathaway. No, Tata Sky, Tata Sky was. Hathaway was there. Dish TV was there. Was there. And Sun TV in South Sun was TV very in strong. South and Adel. Yes, these were pretty much the strongest players mm -hmm. in the country that time in uh, DTH space. Mm -hmm. And in five months then, I got a prepaid portfolio also. What do you mean by that? Prepaid, like we have a bill billing system which is prepaid or postpaid. So prepaid was... For DT, uh, DTH? Not for DTH, for the telecom. The telecom. But I had both. So acquisition happened. So you were asking about the marketing transition. That's where product marketing started happening for me hmm. with the uh, prepaid. Hmm. Now, you are selling sales, I am still assuming that you are joining in sales in Airtel. Yes, DTH was a, more like a sales. And as far as my understanding is, broad level, sales has a very big commission structure in, in space. And a lot of people, as experienced as they get into sales, they have this opportunity cost thing going on there, in their head, that I have made relationships, I am taking money, I am getting my commission is good, I am talking to some people, right? who are like 10, 15 years in sales, even if they want to leave sales, sales they can't leave because they have a commission ka ek structure. Ban gaya. Because fixed aap ki utni hai. Hmm. Fixed ka bhi nahi hoti isme. Hmm. It's usually the variable which is a substantial yeah, portion. part. So, do you ever think that I am moving from sales? Kar hon, yaar, matlab, I, I don't know, I'm just asking. Yeah, it's not variable, to nahi, but even till date, I feel uh, sales roles for me Ji. were very quantifiable. Hmm. You're not always operating in that vague space that I have done this analytics project, hmm. I have turned this around for company forecasting. Kar diya, ye kar. I still feel those were more quantifiable. Fair enough, fair enough. So your performance was measured at a very single, with a single-minded focus at a single unit. Number. Kitna becha. Hmm. Your target was X, you sold X plus 5, so Good. it's whatever it is, 105, 110, that's your number. Hmm. Hmm. You exceeded, you exceeded. Hmm. Hmm. And you didn't exceed, you didn't exceed. Hmm. So deficit, deficit hai, exceed, exceed kya. Or it is not dependent on my relationship with my manager, my stakeholders, cross team collaboration. Utna nahi tha. Hmm. So I think for me, the quantifiable part was the most exciting part, hmm. which I still miss. Hmm. In a role like analytics, sales operation, those are not so very strongly quantifiable hmm. roles. I think the best part about sales is ki you see it in action. Like abhi. True. I mean, you are doing analytics, when will it come to the impact? I mean, there is always a lot of things. Some things are immediate, but most of the things that people do in analytics are future-looking. Very future. Very future-looking and most of the times they don't even happen. Generic, I'm giving you a very generic statement. Yes. Right? So, okay. So, now you move into product marketing, stuff like that. But you stay in two years in Airtel. Yes, I stayed for a very brief period there, two years. One and a half, two years. If I look at history, you will be in a long time in the company. तो क्या वजह रही कि आप दो साल ही रहे? I think one was Gujarat as a place, which was fantastic. मोदी जी थे वहाँ पे सीएम उस टाइम पे. It was 
मोदी जी एज अ सी एम दैन देखो क्या उनका कैंप गया था खुशबू है गुजरात की दैट वॉज वेरी फेमस एंड देर वॉज जस्ट बिफोर यू वॉज मूविंग इन टू द नेशनल इलेक्शन आई वॉज आई थिंक देर वॉज दिस बिग डिजिटल run viral campaign about how he used to operate as a ceo of the state mm-hmm. and he was operating his entire cabinet as if people would companies would operate their mm-hmm. leadership teams mm-hmm. but yes uh, reason for primarily moving out of airtel was that hp came up as a opportunity it was bangalore mm-hmm. i had my brother and his family here in bangalore so that seemed Lord. like a added advantage that okay mm-hmm. i'll get to stay some time with my family because i left my home in 2005 mm-hmm. So after 2005, 7 years had, or rather 8 years had gone past in mm. 2013, mm. and then this opportunity came up for Bangalore. And is he a real brother or is he a cousin? Real brother. Yeah. Okay. So he and his family was here, so it was a good opportunity to be staying with them. Hmm. So you stayed with him like for some time? For the first couple of months, yes, we oh, stayed nice. together, and then uh, of course hmm. we picked up a place uh, of our own because I had also started my family. Hmm. Hmm. But uh, that was the trigger, and then uh, when HP came up. it was a very different case where i had never applied to hp and more than the questions they asked me i was asking them ki yaar main na technology mein hu na main analytics mein hu na consulting background hai i am a sales or a product marketing or a pnl management kind of a profile hmm. why would you hire me for analytics mm-hmm. of all the different things that yeah. i have done they were so interestingly enough they had a entire global sales of uh, kind of a global analytics team here in india in bangalore hmm hmm and couple of other places like china and guadalajara and mexico so they had uh, different verticals by function so like they had one supply chain analytics there was one full vertical on sales analytics they said we wanted somebody from sales to come and join and lead the sales analytics team because you get the business context no? that's why नहीं तो दैट्स हाउ इट हैप क्यों स्टाफिंग कंपनी थी बीच में कैसे मतलब नो 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 इट वाज अ डायरेक्ट कॉल फ्रॉम रेफरल था कुछ क्या था नो यू नो एंड इन फैक्ट व्हेन आई जॉइंड आई आस्क्ड माय मैनेजर हाउ डिड यू गेट माय सीवी आई हैड नेवर अप्लाइड सो ही वाज लाइक ही वाज सिटिंग अलोंग विद द टैलेंट एक्विजिशन पर्सन टू लुक फॉर अ मैनेजर हु कुड लीड द नौकरी पे ऐसी जगह देखा होगा उन्होंने आई डोंट नो नौकरी लिंक्डइन बट इट वाज ऑल 2013 सो इट कुड हैव बीन लिंक्डइन कुड हैव बीन नौकरी बट दे फाउंड माय रेज्यूमे ऑन अ पोर्टल सो ही वाज लाइक ओके वी लेट्स ट्राई इट आउट इट हैपेंड हम Then in HP you stayed for nine years. Yes, that's like a decade. Like that's a lot. Mm. And in nine years, I'm sure there would have been certain things that uh, you thought so the way they work, but eventually after working there you realize that's not how they work. And companies like HP are a case study on their own, right? They are an institution. I I consider companies like GE, HP as like places where everyone should learn. Mm. मतलब आई लव द वे दिस गाइस रन द कंपनी ट्रू हमें लगता है देख के कि क्या कर रहे हैं व्हाई डू दे हैव सो मेनी प्रोसेसेस ये वो बट द लेवल एट व्हिच दिस गाइस आर ऑपरेटिंग इवन टीसीएस फॉर दैट मैटर राइट एज मच एज आई कैन से बैड थिंग्स अबाउट देम द रियलिटी इज एट दैट स्केल दे हैव टू वर्क लाइक दैट वो व्हाट आई बिलीव अगेन आई कैन बी रॉन्ग बट सो एचपी के अंदर जब आप जा रहे थे एचपी में आपकी कुछ परसेप्शंस होंगी कुछ थॉट्स होंगी जनरली अबाउट बिजनेस कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड stuff like that hmm. about culture stuff like that hmm. kaise aapne wo badalte dekhi hp mein first thing i think i had very little perceptions about hp or little understanding but definitely i checked with a couple of friends who had got placed from campus into hp and one constant advice was this is not a good time to join hp kyu because hp was going through a lot of Sure. Then slide uh, on their revenue, and uh, of course there was a lot of uh, loss that was happening on couple of businesses. This is the time when HP was one HP. Uh, today, when you see 2015, they got split into two companies, HP I and HP E, which is Hewlett Packard Enterprise. It was prior to that. 2013, they had no announcement of split. But if you would trace their history a little back, uh, before Meg Whitman, there was another CEO, and they had a couple of quick CEO changes. They did some. not so great acquisitions also that happened so company was going through a lot of leadership turmoil to say so so couple of friends gave me consistent advice this is not a good time to join it company achhi hai but abhi sahi nahi hai ha abhi sahi time nahi hai hmm. but as the calling had to be or destiny had to be i ended up making that call for the reasons as i just told you family was here and i think gujarat or ahmedabad versus bangalore bangalore seemed like a better Much better a better prospect and opportunity location so we decided for it went for it and my only concern or doubt uh, the ones that you are asking for was the same thing ki yaar maine na it kiya hai it hardware ka koi experience nahi hai analytics ka to bilkul bhi nahi tha 
what are they really looking for what would their expectation be you know that measure of success which you usually end up asking in interview questions what is your team what is what uh, is that that you are expecting uh, me to deliver now lead a team is a very kind of vague thing vague thing here yeah, lead a team theek hai sales analytics karni but you are leading a group of bunch of people who are probably data scientist analytics professionals what do you really go and teach mm-hmm. them or talk to them about and how do you lead but i think uh, within the first two and a half three months i realized what i could bring as a value to that team what was that business none, context business context none of the people who were working in the team anybody had ever even remotely done any business function mm-hmm. forget doing sales they had not even remotely exposed themselves to business functions i think that is what really kind of changed or turned the things around for me where i realized that okay there is a need to fill that gap and instantly like there used to be one metrics because it was a global uh, back office analytics kind of a setup how many l3 l2 connects do we have l3 l2 is basically le- leadership yeah. two and leadership three levels l0 is your ceo mm. global president so <coughs> l2 l3 connects kitne mm-hmm. for me first few meetings i was i remember still one of the first planning meetings and i was kind of i had a very bad smirk on my face so my director for that sales uh, tar he picked up on me and he was like what are you really laughing at mm-hmm. i was very blunt uh, given my uh, kind of observations i was like yaar aisa aop meeting to maine kabhi attend nahi kiya matlab l3 l4 connect kitne honge apni company mein hogi ab apni company mein normally hum sales mein kuch sales ka target ho kuch ho matlab i have attended those aop meetings where we have worked and worked on chalpa tar ka sales target company ka aop target budget targets budget numbers you have nothing there is no financial that you discuss there is no sales that you are discussing there is except for connects kitne honge ye forums kitni hongi wo forums kitni hongi but soon i realized that this is what probably mattered to them at that point in time and i was very kind of to my good luck given my uh, kind of business uh, background i was able to pick up those contacts pretty fast with my stakeholders that changed a lot of things for my team and then hp went through that entire turmoil which probably my friends were expecting or foreseeing in terms of that split it was corporate history's biggest split imagine 127 billion dollar company spinning off into two separately stock market traded entities so i remember one was 57 billion dollars at the time of split hpi hpe and hpi was at about 54 billion which one are you, were you part of I was always part of the PC and the printer side of the business so I ended up being part of HPI which is uh, HP Inc mm. the consumer side or consumer facing business of the mm. HP and the other one was the enterprise facing business mm. so and stock market had uh, the the dollar our stock prices were at $28 so $14.07 was the day one price of the <laughs> post split <coughs> everybody had written off hpi saying ki this company Kata like mein. consumer business hai printers pe they are Old making losses hmm. uh, there is no need for printing and pc to waise hi loss making business hai so people had literally written off but hua kya sir so hpi came down to 7 dollars that is your price yes hmm. and that company immediately the hpe the enterprise business that went up from 14 to uh, kind of upwards and 5 years or 3 years later HPI was at about twenty two, twenty six dollars. HPE went all the way down to seven dollars, eight dollars, and then further got split into different entities, picked up by different companies. Is it like because of and predictable and cash flows? That's why I think because the PC I business. The leadership was awesome, hmm? and I think that's Who's the. Who are the leaders? Remember you? surely uh, dion weisler was the first ceo mm. of uh, the post split company mm-hmm. and even uh, the entire leadership across different regions there were three regions primarily americas emea and apj yeah the presidents there the vps there managing the businesses some very very awesome mm. people and leaders that i've worked with were mm. in hp such a warm place and i think one very beautiful place uh, beautiful thing about hp was the warmth and vulnerability I think that's the what do you mean what, what do you mean by vulnerability time. leaders there won't hesitate telling you that they don't know the answers to the questions that arrogance ego nahi thi ego to bilkul bhi nahi and arrogance absolutely zero zilch oh. but uh, of course uh, that vulnerability to be able to very openly say that i am here as much to learn from you as you are here to kind of learn from me that was the vulnerability and humility that was exemplary fantastic 
that's a very big learning for me i think being vulnerable is something that we sometimes discount we feel ki log hame you know in today's competitive environment where perception is reality hmm. people are opposite you want to sound smart you want to sound the smartest but what you are saying in the long term that is what builds teams builds organizations that's the important ingredient of that entire the fabric of that culture which was built hmm. in that hmm. place so awesome place i think i had a great 9 years there at तो डेन मी वन थिंग बिजनेस कॉन्टेक्स में समझिए आपको आता था वो बट जब आप रूम में गए जहाँ पे डेटा साइंटिस्ट बैठे हैं विजुलाइजेशन वाले लोग बैठे हैं थोड़ा तो डर लगा होगा फटी तो थोड़ी मतलब थोड़ा तो लगा होगा कहाँ आ गया मैं क्या हो रहा है ये शुरू में तो लगा होगा नहीं नहीं डेफिनेटली लगता है ये वैसा ही एक्सपीरियंस था जैसा सेल्स में पहली बार लगा था कि नेवर स्टेप इन टू उड़ीसा मार्केट एंड यू हैव अ गाय हु बीन देर इन दैट मार्केट फॉर सिक्सटीन ईयर्स ट्वेंटी ईयर्स सो थोड़ा तो there is you are obviously on your toes तो आपने upskilling की and I think it's a good fear hmm. it's a positive side of fear because fear also keeps you on your toes hmm. Uh, hmm. it's not insecurity but it's that uh, being on the toes kind of a feeling hmm. yeah, there is no other word for it so you had to upskill yourself definitely yes how I picked up uh, I learnt a lot from my uh, team members of course yes picked up lot of courses did lot of uh, kind of reskilling to say so for me it was less of upskilling अपस्किलिंग अब बोल सकता हूँ बट रीस्किलिंग थी मेरे लिए बिकॉज फ्रॉम अ सेल्स टू दिस बट आई ऑल्सो रियलाइज दैट वन ऑफ द रीजन प्रॉब्ली वाई आई कुड सक्सीड इन माई सेल्स स्टेंट इन गुडिया वॉज आई वॉज ऑलवेज टॉप ऑन टॉप ऑफ माई डेटा फॉर माई मार्केट स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम बीट द क्रेडिट लिमिट फॉर योर पार्टनर्स और हाउ मच क्रेडिट लिमिट डू दे हैव इन देयर बैंक उनका बैंक ऑल द वे फ्रॉम देयर कितना चेक आज वो सुबह पेमेंट करने वाला है अपने बैंक में कितना पेमेंट गुडियर को आने वाला है कितना पेमेंट रियलाइज होगा दो दिन बाद कितना टाइम लगेगा क्लियरिंग में सो यू प्लान योर बिलिंग अकॉर्डिंगली आपको कितना स्टॉक आने वाला है फ्रॉम योर वेयर हाउसेज फ्रॉम योर सी एन एफ एस वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ दैट स्टॉक उसमें से क्या बेच पाओगे स्टॉक प्लान में क्या डाला था स्टॉक जो आएगा बहुत फर्क होता है तो आई थिंक दैट डिटेलिंग दैट रिगर दैट क्यूरोसिटी helps you succeed hmm. so i feel it's a very uh, although you need to hmm. still have that uh, reskilling done which i did i could very rarely understand nlp and all at that point in time this is 10 years ago and 14 but fir bhi i attended those workshops uh, i was not a coder by my education as you know by now no developing or a programming experience or a coding experience but i did learn r i did learn you uh, learn r Yes, I did learn R in workshops. What a joke to learn after ten, twelve years of career. So, did learn all of those in workshops. Then, so you were fully out of your comfort zone. You were comfort zone. Me, right? I mean, normally sales wale bande, which I have seen. Sorry to brand as sales wale bande, but you know what I mean, right? They are just too happy with what they are doing. I think comfort zone is a very discomforting feeling, and this is one line that has stayed with me. Goodyear me bhi hoyi hua tha. That is why tires to telecom happened. From telecom. Uh, technology happened from there now it's uh, evs but i think comfort zone is not a great idea uh, comfort zone i i started feeling back in good year back in hp also you may end up getting rusted because there's so much that you know mm. now about an organization the team the working the stakeholders familiarity also with the setup or the entire ecosystem breeds that comfort zone and that comfort zone is probably not a great but thing. that breeds boredom also boredom also yes मतलब एंड आल्सो हिंडर्स योर लर्निंग एंड देन एथर हैपेंस अब आप एचपी में हो 9 साल हो मैं अज्यूम कर रहा हूं कि यू नो अगेन माय अजम्पशंस आर नो वन समवेयर इज सो लॉन्ग इन अ कंपनी स्टॉक प्राइस बढ़ भी रहे हैं ऑप्शंस भी हैं सब कुछ चल रहा है तो बहुत ही कोई बड़ी वजह होती है कोई आदमी छोड़ता है तो या कोई नई कंपनी ज्वाइन करता है तो एथर ज्वाइन करने के पीछे रीजन क्या था डिड यू हैव कनेक्ट विद द फाउंडर्स और लाइक व्हाट वाज व्हाट वाज द रीजन Interestingly enough, it was a cold call from my end to Ether. To Ether. Acha. I dropped a note to their head of talent acquisition. The person was very kind and nice enough to kind of respond immediately, and I think that was the first trigger. If somebody, no matter what uh, tenure of your career you are at, be it a fresher, be it somebody in college looking for internships, I think the least that you expect from an organization is to respond hmm. and close, which rarely happens. The least that you expect. is the rare part that happens so uh, organization and that individual in particular was very kind enough to respond very promptly while whatever happened next in terms of the process is a normal process i had of course no connect with the founders but uh, i think that was a good trigger that gave me a good vibe about the place and coming in from hp 
obviously I had a lot of apprehensions and I still bleed more blue than I bleed uh, red. It's an <laughs> honest confession. I, I still have a lot of HP left in me. So I bleed a lot mm. blue than red. But uh, so there was an apprehension before joining Ether that culture is going to Startups ke liye generally more, of course, everybody does their due diligence as a professional in terms of revenue, kya hoga, sector, kya hai, sector ka growth. Kya hai. Everything good and hunky dory about EVs, but culture is something that you cannot be sure about. So Especially was, HP, it's not a shoes to fill. Ha, that was a big like, HP is the best, like one of the best cultures oh. in the world. At least the one that I had experienced. Yeah, yeah. So it was a big apprehension. But then Aether happened, and I think Aether was, it really, really was very fast to kind of uh, debunk all those apprehensions. It was a, it turned out to be a very, very great experience. Coming in from HP, I think that was my biggest concern. And I have still, I tell uh, to my current manager also, that that was one of my biggest uh, apprehensions. But Aether did a brilliant job in terms of the kind of culture that they are breeding. Hmm, hmm. And it's a, such a difficult thing to control. Imagine for a place like HP, at hiring and firing, neither of that happens at a very rapid pace. It's a very stable place. So you can still control the culture because culture is governed by that large denominator or pool of people who are there. But in a place like Aether, it was a far more difficult task because you have, with every passing day, because of the growth phase that you are in, your denominator is more governed by the new joiners who are coming in from different mm -hmm. places, different cultures, different things, that different backgrounds that they bring to the organization. So it was a far more difficult uh, ask at mm. Aether. But I think company and the leadership team did uh, brilliantly well. So if I look at the average age of a person that works in an HP mm. versus a person that works in Aether, mm. I'm sure that's a stark difference. I don't have stats, but I'm assuming. True. Uh, so, Aether mein baut Gen Z bhi honge. Hmm. There would be a lot of people early 20s. Kya seekha hai abnons? What have you learned from them? Yaar, ye question to pehle nahi diya to tumne list. Main aapko koi bhi question list wala nahi pucha main aapse. No, but uh, I think one of the biggest learnings that I had one, like the generation probably of mine which started sometime in early 2000s, or late 90s working, there was a lot of hierarchy that was there as a part of our conditioning. Hmm. Today when I see that generation, while they are excellent at what they do, they are also very free of any kind of hierarchy. So I think that was a great learning working with uh, Gen Z's and in a place like Aether. Of course, the place and organization also doesn't breed any kind of hierarchy, but it also comes from the people. Because if there are 20 me's, then everybody starts breeding the same kind of culture. Hmm. But the place had so, uh, Aether has so many different people coming in from different backgrounds and age group. Hmm. Much younger as an organization versus a place like HP where people have worked for 35, 40 years. Hmm. They start with HP, retire after hmm. Uh, hmm. their 30, 40 years. Hmm. Here the organization itself is just about 8 to 10 years old. Hmm. Hmm. So... It is a biggest uh, learning, I would say, that how carefree this group is, this generation is, and uh, they carve out time for themselves. They do? They do. They carve out time for the work that they do. Mm -hmm. They are, I think they are far more efficient than probably people of my generation were. Uh, they don't really have stupid notions about how many hours do you give in office to be seen as how, how much have you delivered or work. I think uh, it's, a, it's a great learning. So I think the hypothesis some of the people have developed around this is that and especially in India, hmm. jo India ki agar aap dekhoge, jo Gen Z hai, jab ye 14-15 saal ke the, 16 saal ke the, tab Jio aaya. And Jio aane se internet distribution became democratized and distribution ki dusri side hui, content creation became democratized. Ek to access to content but True. access to create content, content was also was the democratized, right? Parallelly, you started consuming the Western content, hmm. the Netflixes, Amazon Primes of the world. Yeah. And that's where the notion about what are your rights, what is expected from you, uh, and what do you get in return. Hmm. That information arbitrage, pehle kya tha ki, clear nahi tha. Malab, jo meri, jo meri ko samaj aai baat. Hmm. To ye nai generation aai, inho ne last 4-5 saal mein itna content consume kiya Western. And Western workplaces are very different than Indian workplaces. मतलब जो मैंने देखा है अब तो काफी हद तक सेम हो रही है बट काफी काफी डिफरेंट था एक एक दफ्तर कल्चर जो इंडिया का था 
कि जहाँ पे बॉस की चाबलूसी करो यू नो वाई मीन और अमेरिका में बड़ा एक मेरिट बेस्ड स्ट्रक्चर था कि नाइन टू फाइव है इतना है पांच के साढ़े पांच हुए तो ओवर टाइम लगना शुरू हो जाता है यू नो वाई मीन इंडिया में तो किसी कंपनी में नहीं लगता है तो जो जेन जी है आई फील की वो वेस्टर्न कल्चर से काफी कुछ सीखी नाउ द चैलेंज विद दैट इज जो आपने हर की बात की राइट एज मच गुड इट इज टू बी मेरिट बेस्ड समटाइम्स यू डोंट नो वॉट इज मेरिट यू माइट थिंक यू आर वेरी लर्निंग people were very very carefree for them work is work they have time carved out for their personal mm. life mm. everybody has certain passions that they are very mm. uh, keenly following so and that's across the organization i think that gives you a fresh breath of life work for 20 years suddenly you step into a startup with uh, people who are 20 somethings there's a lot to learn from that group mm. so that's where i would probably say that uh, ether was like a fresh breath of life but daftar wala jo culture aap bol rahe ho that is not just something which changed from gen z i would say even from millennial time change aane lag gaya tha because 90s when we were just something like we were talking about 90s right yeah, yeah. so when that started happening true, companies true. started coming to india hmm. so wo to early 2000 when i started i think i never experienced daftar kind of a culture hmm. uh, people were like gudiya mein gudiya time pe shuru mein to kiya hoga aapne Nee, yeah, Goodyear was yeah, a very the, fantastic nah. place, no U.S. based company, mm-hmm. and uh, again, leaders had spent considerable number of years there, so it was not really that kind of a culture that I experienced ever the after wala. Hmm. But uh, of course, it evolves with the period of time. But one interesting nuance was after twenty years of working, when you see somebody in a any Gen Z setup, and you see obviously you you have when you see uh, Gen Z making a presentation on a stage, and you See that okay, this guy is talking about topic. More than the topic, I think as a subconscious, because of certain conditioning that you come from, you are constantly scanning the person. As a individual, as an individual, you are scanning that person, and you of course have certain judgments, notions. But when you look on the other side of the table, you realize that वो ही channel partner जिनके साथ आप काम कर रहे थे 20 साल पहले या 15 साल पहले, that was a previous generation. and probably you and that generation were in a particular era hmm. while that distributor might have been 20 year elder to me but that era was like in a parenthesis hmm. you were in that same bracket right right so you were trying to work as a professional with that <coughs> generation hmm. now when i look back even the entrepreneurs the businessmen the channel partners that we are talking of unki bhi second generation third generation is in a business which fits very well with the persona and profile that i'm trying to scan or hmm. judge hmm. to be little brutal about my own self they are part of the same parenthesis they are the part of the same era that they are living in and probably that is the kind of persona and profile required to work with this second and third generation of business family hmm so so now you lot of no, notions that i had probably no. should have been debunked hmm. and they got debunked hmm. and now aap ek company like ether mein kaam kar rahe ho jo india ke liye bana rahi hai kuch hmm. you are like rit- literally sitting in the middle of this startup revolution that is happening in this country ये स्टार्टअप रेवल्यूशन इज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ अ मैक्रो स्टोरी जो कुछ हद तक वीसीज कुछ हद तक इकोनॉमिक देखते हैं जो ये मैक्रो इंडिया बुल स्टोरी है इसके बारे में कुछ कहना एनीथिंग यू वांट टू टॉक अबाउट दैट व्हाट डू यू थिंक इंडिया का क्या होने वाला है पांच दस पंद्रह साल में बाय ऑल मींस बाय ऑल नंबर्स आई थिंक पांच दस पंद्रह साल तो इज वेरी फार आई थिंक द वे एंड फॉर मी वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट इंडिकेटर ऑफ दिस एंटायर ग्रोथ स्टोरी इज where your stock market indexes hmm. move hmm hmm uh, 2010 was the first time when i started investing in a stock market as a small retail sib investment. kaise kiya tha maine yeah equity investments hmm. so i realized uh, that time the market was at 17000 hmm 2010 i think sometime in jan and feb market hmm. was at 17000 hmm. now it's 50 no today it's at 60 50. i think it closed at 64 hmm. all time high all time high hmm hmm so you see a 5x 4x kind of a number so i think it's a brilliant story in just a span of 12 years 13 mm-hmm. years that you see 4x mm-hmm. from here on 
I don't see any reason for it to be anything lesser than this in next couple of 12 years. It would probably be a higher, higher multiplier than this. And uh, look at your entire uh, ecosystem, which is now further kind of going to propel your next 10 to 15 years, your Semicon, your EV setups, Teslas of the world, your Foxcons of the world. Entire setup uh, is, and for all we may know, pretty soon you will have uh, lithium ion processing, uh, all that ecosystem, battery, uh, the ecosystem of that also set, getting set, set up in India. I think it all put together, it's kind of a good plot or a narrative for our India growth story, which should continue. And there's no reason for it to be not continuing. Hmm. Anything that you feel might be a hindrance to this, this growth story? I'm sure you think about things, I mean, I think that I'm telling my story that the country we live in, uh, it is, there's a lot of political angle across the country and it happens in any country. And our country is at a delicate space because Pakistan on one side, hmm. China on one side, at a geopolitical level. I feel like if Pakistan economy failed, which I have done. I have done, I mean, I'm saying that it's actual fail. It means that it's all finished. And China might start to try to take over Pakistan, True. which I have done with Sri Lanka. Which I have done with Sri Lanka. Then I think that on a geopolitical level, it will be a little challenge for India. And that, I mean, I'm just trying to think of negatives. What is possible? So, in your mind, you want to say that if these things are not going to be better, then our country's story will continue. I think geopolitical is always a factor with many countries. Hmm. Look at Turkey, look at Indonesia, look at this place, uh, Russia, India, yeah. or look at Russia, look at US. For that matter, if Trump comes again, then how things may change there versus how yeah, yeah. Biden is there. Even in that Biden uh, tenure, a pre-Modi visit and a post-Modi state visit, you will see suddenly a lot of change. You happening. saw what happened right now. The talent inflow, especially from the talent perspective, how talent inflow and migration can happen or ease off. So there are a lot of things. So geopolitical is always difficult to comment on. All economies do want a stable geopolitical setup. So, but that said, if that was your fear, I think for me, one of the biggest fears is, which is, uh, for me, it's like we as Indians, as a working group, and today you are youngest uh, population in the, one of the youngest, if not the youngest, you see countries like uh, Japan, hmm. where you see Asian demographics population. changing. There are many other such examples and countries in Europe where uh, demographics are changing. In next 15 years, I think that's a bigger thing to kind of worry about where your working population will start reducing, your life expectancy goes up, a lot of dynamics around this changes, your kind of jobs that people are today in will change drastically over the next 10 to 15 years with a lot of uh, automation kicking in. So what is the kind of work that people will be involved? That of course evolves over a period of time. But the number of people, the working population itself is a one concern that I see and the other concern is which is more on the behavioral side as a population I have to slog when you slog so much and if you move into cerebral roles over the next 10-15 years your burnout will be an issue which will which has already started showing up in many economies but for India it will definitely start showing up more prominently is what I feel I think you have aging population wali baat kiya, completely 100% agree with it and the other worrying factor is the household savings. In that time, it was 53% in India. Mein. Hmm. Now they are at 17%. Hmm. What that tells you is that as this population is aging, we were banking that they will savings on hmm. the interest, pe, which, which was a high interest market, hmm. which we assume that India has a very high interest market, hmm. it will come to 12-10% hmm. and they can live on it. But the savings are so much that they will be the capital, they will be the capital, क्या ही इंटरेस्ट आएगा तो पीपल पोस्ट 60 आल्सो विल हैव टू फिगर आउट अ फॉर्म ऑफ वर्क लुक एट सिंगापुर दैट्स द थिंग वेयर द इंटरेस्ट रेट्स आर टू लो एंड यू नीड टू वर्क टू सरवाइव इफ यू आर इन अ कंडीशन टू वर्क यू वर्क दैट्स अ वेरी एंड सिंगापुर इज ऑफ कोर्स गिवन इट्स स्टेटस ऑफ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट डेवलप्ड नेशंस नो मैटर हाउ टाइनी इट इज 5 मिलियन पॉपुलेशन वर्सेस बैंगलोर हैविंग अ 13 मिलियन पॉपुलेशन it's not even comparable to yeah. one of the cities, big cities right, in India. Right. But that said, I think uh, that's definitely something to look forward to. But at the same time, look at where has that money uh, moved from. If you're talking of savings, those savings were defined in a different manner 
in the time that you are referring to versus in the times that we are currently in and in the times where you will uh, be probably headed for. Today we talk of uh, more savings in terms of not your FDs and banking but more as a retail investor I am talking of myself. Today 60-70% uh, of my personal uh, investments they are not in your banking setup they are more in the equity in the market and likewise for many other people and going forward probably it could be cryptos so far we haven't seen great success but there are many people who are playing pretty heavy on cryptos do you invest in cryptos yes i do and there are people who buy in the dip buy in the dip right there are now people who kind of uh, hmm. have already started experimenting with nfts hmm. so avenues have changed so what your 60% of or 53% versus 17% Probably that is more to, and plus consumption is good for that economy to be kind of, that's what you mm. are bullish about, right? Yeah. That's how companies are, that's how you mm. make money out of the market. So the way to make that money has changed. Mm. The avenues of investment and savings have changed and that continues to change. I think on a, on a, on a side note, when you said blockchain, uh, Bitcoin, uh, crypto Cryptos. and NFTs, I really respect people who talk about crypto and NFT right now. When the market is down, they go last two years ago, Every person was talking about it. Now you will see, no one is talking about it. So if you are talking about it, you have some hypothesis why you are like, why you believe in crypto? Interesting uh, data point like, uh, you realize when US the dollar, USD, became the international currency of prominence? When hmm. was it? 70s, 80s? No, this was 40s. Post gold, World gold, War gold standard because of that? The bullion thing. Hmm. So post World War II is where the US started creeping in because many countries needed money. Bullion was a super easy and that's how dollars started creeping in. Today what is India planning to do? You would have just read about like few months ago, no? Uh, Abu Dhabi, Middle East, one of the airports, either Abu Dhabi or Dubai, they've started accepting INR. Hmm. So fundamentally what you are trying to say is dominance of one currency over another. Now what really stops the notion or what really undermines the notion of having another parallel currency and by the way the entire dark web thing if you would have uh, kind of read about it then there is a lot of transaction that happens in the dark web or uh, sure, in right. that part of the world. world which is not known to many people happens in these currencies right hmm. because you would not even want to trade in any of these uh, more acceptable currency forms but the dominance of one currency over other is always a question and that's how countries establish or economies establish mm. their dominance. If India is able to do that in next 15 years where dollar was 15 years ago, even that would be commendable enough. Mm. Imagine the kind of uh, forex reserves that you will sit on, the kind of trade treaties that you would have with economies across. Implications are many. Crypto is nothing but probably a similar attempt where some of these non-national entities or no national binding takes over. There are pros and cons. It might not happen because then you are talking of country versus a parallel currency which does not belong to or has no backing from any country. But things are to be seen. If you personally ask me, I think there is space for both to there is coexist. A space for both. Because if you look at how the demographics are evolving, hmm. it's going on extreme sides, right? Hmm. Whether it's politically either ekdam right wing, ekdam left wing. Similarly, there are people who really believe in the government. There are people who just don't believe in it. Hmm. And you are across the world. Whether it's 1% population, hai, but that 1% is a very big population. True. Right? So, I think that things like crypto, what is Bitcoin, what is Ethereum, what is that, that doesn't know anyone. But something like that would, would work. No, that fanaticism of the thinking, although shows up in how you look at US elections. Hmm. No, that fanaticism of the thinking also shows up in how you look at US elections. Obviously. When uh, Trump was competing against Clint, uh, Hillary Clinton, you saw how North Dakota and some of those territories, Texas, North Dakota, that part, if you look at that, and again, uh, comes in analytics and visualization. Mm. If you look at any of that US visualization of how the voter bank was distributed, you clearly see certain pockets, which may seem like a smaller pocket, not so influential pocket in terms of the they flip financial the abil abilities, but they have the capability to flip, flip things around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm. I think that... Thought process can clearly mm. be seen, that divided thought process. Mm. Wow, I think... So, coexistence of both these very, mm. very nationally backed currencies versus not so nationally backed or no national binding of the currencies in form of cryptos, both are likely wow. to coexist. I think this was a very interesting conversation. We have talked about it. 
काफी चीजों के बारे में और लेट्स ट्राई टू समराइज योर 20 इयर्स ऑफ करियर 2020 टू इयर्स ऑफ करियर अगर हम आप एक करियर में देखें 20 साल के अंदर आपको क्या लगता है कि कौन सी एक डिफाइनिंग चीज आपने की जिस वजह से आप आज जहां भी हो आप हो व्हाट वाज दैट वन थिंग और दैट मोमेंट दैट कंपनी आई डोंट नो व्हाट वाज दैट वन थिंग और दैट बॉस आई थिंक वर्किंग विद माय फादर I clearly remember one instance, and I'll tell you that uh, was, I told you '98. I started kind of working in the business while I was in my graduation. One of the days, I didn't go to office, and my father came back from office, and he was like, "Aaj office kyun nahi aaye the?" I said, "Arey, itni barish ho rahi thi. Jaipur mein aandi thi, barish thi, maine aaye." And the line that he said, I think that was, while it's a narrative of that entire thing, but the line that he said was, "Gatte ke bane ho kya? Gatte is like cardboard." I know. So, गत्ते के बने हो क्या कि hmm. बारिश आएगी तो गल जाओगे और hmm. आंधी आएगी तो उड़ जाओगे hmm. like, अरे दिखता है इंटेंट अब दिखता है बीस साल बाद बट आई थिंक ही वॉज माई ग्रेटेस्ट इन्फ्लुएंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ वेर एवर आई एम टूडे द रिगर और बींग एबल टू ट्रीट एवरी थिंग एट पार इन टर्म्स ऑफ वट एवर बी द वर्क बींग एबल टू क्रश योर ईगो stay grounded i think all of those things my lot of my basic or part of my characteristic or dna comes from the time that i worked with him hmm. so i realized ki ha matlab baat to sahi bol rahe hain there is there has to be a rigor hmm. and discipline in life hmm. so i think those wow. were the moments which taught me things beautiful baaki to sab kuch on the job training hoti hai beat sales bees analytics hmm. beat hmm. product marketing wo sab to aap company mein seekh jate ho hmm. but no manager otherwise will really teach you these hmm. kind of things so let's want to end it i think this is a fantastic conversation jis tarike se aapne batayi baat hai i think uh, we saw thoda emotional bhi ho rahe the we saw that because he is no more so of I course it stays as a very special memory for me. right so one last i'm a 23 year old ha huh. if a 23 year old is watching one piece of advice you want to give to them stay curious and stay humble perfect I think this was fantastic. Thank you so much, Agit. Thank you, Rajesh. It was awesome talking to you and great conversation. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.